JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, Hanover police released photos of triple murder suspects appeal for public's help. The Hanover Police of Unearth photographs, suspected to be of the perpetrators of the March triple murder case in Suntoy, Hanover, and are appealing for assistance from the public in identifying the individuals. In a release shared with photos on the night of the incident, the police said detectives have made some headway in the case, having followed several investigative leads and the lines of inquiry. However, in hopes of helping the case to advance further, they are encouraging the public to share any information they may have that can help investigators. Individuals were taken into custody during an operation by a joint security force team in the parish in March as lawmen probed the attack that claimed the lives of 44-year-old Omar Mahabi, 55-year-old Michael Smith and 37-year-old Mark Austin. Police report that shortly after 7 p.m., the men were installing security cameras at a mini mart located at the Logwood Suntoy Crossroad when gunmen posing as customers opened fire on people outside. Smith and Austin died on the spot, and their bodies were moved to Doyle's funeral home after the crime scene was processed about 12.35 a.m. Thursday. Mahabi was pronounced dead at the Noel Holmes Hospital in the parish. Investigators can be contacted via the Lucy Criminal Investigations Branch at 876 956 2304, Crime Stopper 311, the National Intelligence Bureau tip line at 811, or any police station. Man killed in head on crash involving ambulance in St. Bess. A man died as a result of injuries he sustained in a three vehicle crash involving an ambulance on the Luana Main Road in St. Elizabeth on Saturday morning. Police have not yet released his identity. According to the police, about 9 a.m., the ambulance was traveling from Black River towards Middle Quarters when the driver attempted to overtake a tractor trailer while negotiating a corner and collided it on with a Honda motor car which was traveling in the opposite direction. The impact resulted in a collision with the trailer. The occupants of the motor car and the ambulance were rushed to hospital where the driver of the car was pronounced dead. AR-15 among two firearms seized in St. James. The St. James police are reporting that they seized two guns and 42 rounds of ammunition during separate operations on Friday morning. According to a police source, officers assigned to the Mount Salem Zone of Special Operations Ozo were conducting a snap raid along Pigot Street in the community where they found a Smith & Wesson semi-automatic pistol with a magazine containing 12 live 9mm cartridges beneath some rocks. Hours later, while acting on information, members of a joint police military operation from the Norwood Zozo conducted a further operation where an AR-15 rifle with 30 live 5.56 cartridges were recovered, the police said. No arrests were made in connection with either gun seizures. The St. James police are investigating. In the meantime, citizens are being encouraged to call Crime Stopper 311 to report guns and other illicit activities in their communities. Man dead, six others injured after shooting in Kingston. A man is dead and six others wounded following a shooting incident on Greenwich Park Road in Kingston on Friday evening. The deceased has so far only been identified by his alias, Barry. Information received is that a group of people was on Greenwich Park Road about 7 p.m. when a motor car drove up on the occupants of the vehicle open gunfire at them before escaping. Barry was among seven men shot in the incident. They were taken to hospital where Barry succumbed to his injuries. Man gunned down near market in Montego Bay. The police in Montego Bay, St. James, are investigating the shooting death of a man in the vicinity of the Charles Court Market. The deceased has been identified by the police by the alias FIFA. The shooting happened about 7 o'clock on Friday morning. The police report that the man was standing in an area called Riverside when he got into an argument with two men. It is further reported that the dispute escalated and one of the men pulled a gun and opened fire. The man was hit several times. The police were called and investigators processed the scene. They say further investigation revealed that the deceased was a violence producer who was linked to several robberies in the market district. Vendor charge in Kingston bus stop fight. The Kingston Central Police have charged a 30-year-old man for wounding with intent after he allegedly stabbed a man at a bus stop in South Parade in downtown Kingston in April. Charges Glenrith Dale, otherwise called Asher, a vendor of John Street in Kingston 16. Reports are that about 2 p.m. The complainant and Dale had a dispute. The melee escalated, during which a knife was used to stab the complainant to the left side of his forehead, the right side of his back and the left thumb. 
The injured man was taken to hospital where he was admitted. Dale was apprehended on June 22. His court date has been arranged. Sent and man charged with shooting his brother, Audley Hines, a 47-year-old mace of Hinesdown, which we since sent on, has been charged with wounding with intent, illegal possession of firearm and illegal possession of ammunition, after he shot his brother in his community on Wednesday, June 1. Reports from the Senton police are that about 10 p.m. A man was walking along the roadway when he was pounced upon by three men who opened fire hitting him in the face. During the melee, he recognized that one of the men was his brother. The injured man was transported to hospital where he was admitted in stable condition. On Friday, June 24, a question and answer session was conducted with Hines and he was charged. Leaders in the public transport sector unhappy with proposed toll hike. The proposed increase of toll fees for Highway 2000 has not found favor with transportation operators as motorists continue to grapple with high fuel prices and other expenses. The increases, announced Friday, are expected to take effect on Saturday, July 2. On the Portmore leg of the highway, the fee for Class 1 vehicles will move from $290 to $340, from $470 to $550 for Class 2, and from $870 to $1,020 for Class 3 buses and trucks. At the Vineyard Stoll Plaza, drivers of Class 1 vehicles will be paying $600, up from $550, from $810 to $900 for Class 2 and Class 3, $1,800 from $1,510. The new fee sum came announced the autoress on the north south leg of the highway. We'll see Class 1 paying $2,130, $4,265 for Class 2, and $6,395 for Class 3. Chief Executive Office of the Toll Authority, Lerun Leng, said that the increase in toll rates is an annual exercise based on concession agreements with operators of the east-west and north-south legs of the highway. The operators are entitled to adjust the toll rate in accordance to a formula that is there, which includes consumer price index and exchange rate. So with those movements, they are within their rights, according to concession agreement. It was reviewed and approved by Cabinet and the Minister once it was in line with the terms of the concession agreement, he said. At the same time, Leng noted that consideration was taken for motorists based on the tough economic situation. Of course, from a consumer perspective for road users and the operator's perspective, because their cost is associated with their operations and maintenance of the toll road as well, the intention is always to strike a balance, he said. They are not charging the maximum allowable toll charges at this time. Many of the links are being charged below the maximum that they could have charged. So that alone tells you that a lot of consideration was put in for road users with the economic climate we find ourselves in, he added. But President of the Transport Operators Development Sustainable Services, Edgerton Newman, argued that public transport operators will be badly affected by the increase. He called on Minister of Transport and Manning Audley Shaw to put a hold on increasing toll fees at this time. This is unbelievable. At a time this sector is going through a great deal in terms of operating costs, reduction in passenger carriage, increase in fuel costs and spare parts. To now take another increase in toll, it can't work, he said. I haven't worked out the details yet, but it is a major blow to the sector right now because we can't take any more increase. It is a little bit too much for us right now, he said. A similar response was given by President of the Jamaica Union of Travelers Association, Kingston Chapter, Noel Williams. Given what is happening at the increased price of gas and other things we are facing, I think it is a very bad decision, and I don't think the government should grant that increase on the toll. Every resistance should be put up to reject that request, said Williams. I am not supporting it. We have over 6,000 operators in our systems who operate island-wide, and we are saying no to the toll increase at all costs. We are not supporting it. If the toll were to increase, I think the minibus and the taxi men will very well have to ask for an additional increase also because of that, he added. The toll increase will range between 9.09% and 26.67%. At the same time, the operators have offered to lessen the impact of the increase by proposing to offer a discount to motorists who use the Portmore and Spanish Town toll plazas after their 10th trip. With the notice of the proposed increases published Friday, the public will have five days to provide feedback to the Transport Ministry. Modern police station coming to Lakovia, St. Elizabeth. 
A new state-of-the-art police station is expected to be completed within the next three years in Lakovia, St. Elizabeth. According to a release, Minister of National Security, Horace Chang, broke ground for the 5,223-square-foot facility, which is expected to cost $175 million. Speaking at the event on Thursday, June 23, the minister insisted the government's bid to upgrade police stations across the island will allow the officers to better serve and protect citizens. We want to send the message clearly to the country that the government is committed, without any reservation, to investing in our security forces and to give them the capacity to respond to the level of violence in the society, said Chang. Construction is expected to commence in July. The minister also affirmed that the government is equipped in the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, with the necessary tools required to respond to crime and effectively do administrative work. We will ensure that they get computers, smart instruments to be able to communicate quickly and in real time, to be able to manage cases, and to be able to respond quickly, he said. Six police stations across the island have already been constructed under the ministry's project, rebuild, overall, and construct. Jamaica reports 150 new COVID cases, one death. Jamaica reported 150 new COVID-19 cases and one death on Friday, according to the latest statistics from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. This pushed the total number of cases of the virus since the start of the pandemic to 142,276 and the death toll to 3,113. Of the newly reported cases, there were 73 females and 42 males with ages ranging from 92 days to 85 years. The cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew 48, St. Catherine 33, St. James 10, Westmoreland 5, Hanover 4, St. Anne 4, St. Thomas 3, Clarendon 3, Manchester 2, St. Elizabeth 1, St. Mary 1, and Trelawney 1. The country also recorded 92 new recoveries, bringing the total number of recoveries to 90,479. The positivity rate for the latest round of testing was 20.4%. There are 97 people hospitalized, three of them critically ill. There are 2,148 confirmed active cases on the island. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.